Ladies and gentlemen, I am online. Who am I, you may ask? Well, that really depends. Some people call me Bronze, while others call me Orvik. But no matter the name or title, I am the one true Omnigamer. Pleasure to meet you. This is a historic moment for me, as it will be my very first audio game review. Now normally I would just write this game review at my blog, Video Omega, but thanks to all the fall releases of games, plus the fact my university is kicking the crap out of me with finals, I simply don't have time to write this bad boy up proper. So finally I decided to use my YouTube account to spread my glorious message of video game critiquing. Up until the point, it was just collecting dust. Well, the internet equivalent to dust, anyway. But enough about that. You came here for a game review, and rightfully so. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's head into Saints Row 2. Now, this game is a direct sequel to Saints Row. A game that looked beautiful, played nice, and had an interesting story. While it borrowed a lot from San Andreas, it also had things that San Andreas couldn't even touch. Like many games that made you feel like you were having fun, and weren't wasting your time. It also had a finely tuned combat system that to this day still makes Grand Theft Autos look like a joke. But I would have to say my favorite part about the original game was its ending. And if you don't know the ending of Saints Row, or for that matter had an Xbox 360 and never played Saints Row, then shame on you brothers and sisters. Shame on you indeed. Saints Row 2 starts off where the first game ended, well, three or four years later, where the main character, the guy you play, is firmly locked up in prison just waking up from a coma. Since cement blocks and gray bars ain't exactly pimp, the player soon leaves the prison and finds his way back to Stillwater, only to find out that things have changed considerably. The player's gang, the Saints, hence the title, has been disbanded, and now the city's under control by three gangs, the Brutish Brotherhood, the drug-obsessed Sons of Sande, and the Ronin, a samurai gang with a criminal bent. And since these gangs won't simply stand aside, there's only one way the once and future King of the Street should respond. Resurrect the Saints, and bring the pain. Now the look of the player has always been at the mercy of the player, but in Saints Row 2 it's been ramped up to 11, because now you can make him look like anything, or any one, or any gender, as a matter of fact. After you invest about maybe an hour and a half trying to decide how your player will look, it's time to hit the streets and cause some chaos, which hasn't changed much since the first Saints Row, except for melee combat. Don't get me wrong, no changes in the third person shooter combat in this game is definitely a good thing. Guns work as they should, and they all come in shapes, different shapes and sizes. From the handgun to the Rambo-esque minigun. And demos don't cry because we got satchel charges for this game too. Place them, run, and press the button. Whatever you placed it on will be a distant memory. Melee combat gets a special nod from me because it adds a bit of a flourish to your close combat in the game. You start off with a simple brawling fighting style in the beginning, but as you progress through the game, you unlock more, ranging from brutal to, let's just say, odd. Each fighting style comes with its own grouping of finishers that you can perform on an enemy after pressing attack like three times. Yes, I know, very simple, brainless even, but hey, it's effective and entertaining. The player, like in the first game, has health recovery, which is great when you're trying to make a getaway and you don't have to worry about having that last bullet be the one to do you in. However, this ability is not the key to immortality, people. If you pick too many fights with too many pimps, you will go down. Hard. And just in case you don't listen to me, there's no shame in stopping at any fast food restaurant in Stillwater to pick up some 
chicken bazooms or some old guy from the Chinese restaurant down the block. They'll recover your health and much faster than health regeneration will. Players don't have to fight the good fight by themselves either. They can always recruit a Saints gang members to help you out either through drive-bys or raiding bases. Even better, you can even allow online players to join your game to help with missions or, if you're bored, set still water on fire. I'm not judging you. Despite the player's skills and the ability to play this game with other people, the three gangs of still water that are currently in control do not take it easy on you and they don't get any easier as you progress through the missions. The missions are varied and it requires a certain amount of skill and a little bit of luck to complete them successfully. Fortunately, if you manage to beef it, you can always go back to the beginning or the checkpoint within the mission and you can try it again. The reward for completed missions are the same as rewards for successful base raids, territories. Those territories are yours and through territories you earn a certain amount of money. You can also buy certain buildings on the territories you now own. Those buildings, in turn, will stuff even more money down your pockets. The problem now is that wherever you got that territory from, that gang probably wants it back. So they're going to send their toughest riders and wage a little war on whatever territory at the time, sooner or later. Your gang members, although tough, ain't tough enough to deal with that, so guess who they're going to call? That's right. You and the player. Now the gangs are bad, but the police are even worse. What doesn't annoy the gangs will certainly annoy the popo. They will come down on you if you do anything, even innocent little nudist flashing. Can you believe it? And unlike the gangs, who will just chase you when they're PO'd, the police will just block off all the streets, making a quick getaway almost impossible. You will catch Hades with this game. Even bums off the street will flex if you give them a reason to. But hey, if you keep your glocks locked, then you'll be alright, baby. I approve of Saints Row 2 for, well, two reasons. One, variety. Two, fun. There is a lot to do in the game, so much so that it's almost too much to do. Remember when I said that you could customize your character? Well, guess what? You can customize your vehicle and your gang. You ever dreamed about owning your own gang of ninjas carrying Uzis, riding around in 4x4s and SUVs? It's a possibility in Saints Row 2. When you're done customizing your reality, you can move on to the mini-games found throughout the city, such as skydiving, assassination, drive-by shooting, taxi service, fake insurance fraud scam, street racing, boat racing, plane racing, drug trafficking, fight clubs, bodyguarding, grand theft auto, not the game, but the actual criminal act, and many, many more activities await you in this game. And while doing these activities, you'll be having fun all at the same time. I'll admit, some of them do get a little monotonous and annoying, but seriously, that's a few and far between. And if you get annoyed with one activity, well, you can move on to the next one. And with all this fun I'm having, I really don't have anything bad to say about the game except the obvious. And of course, the obvious is that this game is a lot like San Andreas. San Andreas was the last great GTA in my opinion. What it is now, thanks to GTA 4, is a realistic bore with emotional issues. Hey, if Saints Row wants to pick up where San Andreas left off, I got no complaints. As long as the game is good, then it's all good. And I suppose Saints Row 2 won't win any awards for best writing. In fact, that I prefer the first game's ending to this game's ending. But really, this is just nitpicking for an overall excellent game. So, as my final word on the game, I must give it my highest non-perfect rating. A Platinum. It is fun, it is good, and is essential to any Xbox 360 library. 
Well, this all sews up the review rather nicely, I think. I'd like to thank you all for listening, but this ain't the end, oh no. I got plans. And I hope you all will join me again on my next review. And if you want to know more about what I do, please visit my website, or rather my blog. The website comes later. But in the meantime, stay tuned.